Uh, and just one point, I wanted to sort of make my big idea, sort of going with the, with the flow of the CERT conference, is that just because something is complex doesn't mean that it has to be complicated. Uh, also, I don't wish to make people bored. There are ways that we can take uh, complex information and make it accessible. Um, I want to show you a couple of case studies of some excellent, famous, and historical infographics that have done that. Uh, the first, you may have seen this before. This is Charles Bernard's uh, illustration of Napoleon's uh, conquest into Moscow, and then obviously his defeat and retreat. So you can see by the, the, the size of this line that he demonstrates the power of the force and then obviously uh, how it weakens over time. So you could write something like this, or you could show a, 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 a chart that shows statistical information. But this is much more beautiful, frankly, first of all. Uh, and secondly, there are a lot more inherent and sort of like innuendos in here that will sort of allow you to, to grasp the information in a much better way. Uh, well, as an information designer, I like to leverage something called existing mental models. So people understand uh, uh, maps, and they understand line thickness, color, type, and those sorts of things. And they can relate to the information much more viscerally than it was written as like a credit card statement. Uh, this is Florence Nightingale's Rose. She present, presented this to the British Parliament during the Crimean War to show that, in fact, men were dying because of uh, uh, unsanitary conditions in military hospitals versus actual warfare. Uh, when she presented this, they first thought, uh, well, maybe she's crazy, but after a second glance, they realized that it was absolutely true. Uh, this is the Pioneer plaque, which went on Pioneer 1, which is out in space right now. And they thought that we might encounter aliens. And if we did, we don't want to send them a message written in American English, because who knows if they'll understand that. So let's draw some pictures. So we see here some uh, information here that, that's visualized that's showing us of some data about who we are as human beings. We'll start with the people. So we're a race of men and women. Um, I wish we were wearing clothes. I think that's sort of a part of our characteristic. Uh, on the bottom there, you can see that that's a diagram of our solar system, and that, in fact, the probe has come from that place. The shape of the probe is drawn. And up top, we see that uh, that is actually a diagram of the hydrogen atom split. So that shows that we have atomic capabilities. So that might be provocative, as well as, uh, hey, we have energy. Uh, who doesn't love beer? Uh, this year was the Great American Beer Fest. It was actually last week. My father-in-law, who's a beer writer, was there covering the event, uh, <laughs> sleeping in between sessions. Uh, so we decided to crunch the numbers, 25 years of data from the Great American Beer Fest. And we thought, well, maybe we could show what the best beers are, but why don't we maybe connect it to where people live and show where the best beer comes from in the country? So um, you can sort of look very quickly. I'm using an intensity map, which color denotes uh, the amount. Uh, you can see that California rules the school. Um, and we're followed by some of the more known beer states like Colorado, Wisconsin, Illinois, Pennsylvania, New York, if you hear me, uh, and Texas. I, I didn't know Texas was actually a big beer state, but they are. If you're a baseball fan, uh, you know that statistics is actually like, probably even more popular than baseball itself. So um, I decided to do this exercise. I am not a sports person. Um, so I entered this sort of with an open mind. And I decided that I thought it would be interesting to map hitting records um, of all time. Uh, so we map them to the baseball diamond, and we use the backfield, the wall, where you hit the ball, the ball uh, to map the timeline. Um, and it, what's interesting is I think this is the only legal record that Pete Rose actually has. I also do a lot of charity work. Uh, I, I help a lot of uh, uh, nonprofit organizations take sort of what they do, which sometimes can be, even through the, the best public relations person and the face-to-face, um, uh, take what they do and, and visualize it, create an illustration, something that they can put in the, uh, on the wall at an event or put on their website. Uh, this is from my father-in-law's charity. He is a prostate cancer survivor, uh, and the charity is called Pints for Prostates. So the way it works is he gets men together, they have beers, they taste beers, they learn about beer, and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, there's this thing called prostate cancer. Maybe you should get tested for it. And then they're like, after a few of them, they're like, all right. <laughs> So we decided to create this graphic called the conversation which details that process. Um, and I, I sort of put some of the more horrifying statistics at the bottom. Uh, it's actually a, it's one of the biggest killers of men, cancer loss. Uh, also, again, with American politics, I decided to chronicle the history of our flag. I don't know if you guys have done this, but we've changed our flag design 
a lot since in the 200 some odd years that we've been around. So I created a timeline that takes us through the history of, of those different flags and where they were in, in history and sort of how they impacted the country uh, from a visual standpoint. Uh, at one point, which I thought was very interesting, is that we had 15 stripes on the flag. I don't know if you all knew that. Um, and that is, in fact, the Star Spangled Banner flag when we refer to it that way. I know we sort of uh, uh, blue stars and stripes, uh, Star Spangled Banner, and Old Glory all together, but there actually were individual flags at one point. Um, and uh, on the bottom here, I have uh, some examples of Revolutionary War flags, uh, some of which you see now at Tea Party rallies, in fact, uh, sort of coming back. Uh, but this is the designer's sort of look into uh, uh, the history of our flag. But I found that uh, once I published this graphic, I was getting notes from social studies teachers saying, thank you so much for this. My students really appreciate the flag and where it's come from, right? Versus like, here are just some and here's what it looks like now. They can see it at the moment that it changed. Uh, another very important thing is it's quite hard to come up with a symmetrical pattern for an asymmetrical amount of numbers or stars uh, each time you do it. So I really applaud the people who have discovered this. <laughs> uh, this was a graphic that I recently uh, uh, won a $5,000 award uh, during a Design for America competition. Um, I collaborated with the chair of the history department at Queens, Suzanne Cooper Bosco, and we went through the process from the Library of Congress website of how a bill becomes a law. Okay. We thought maybe we'd make a song, but that's been done. It's now 30 plus years old, so maybe the style of music can upgrade a little bit, all right? Um, but we thought that we'd create this poster. And again, I'm getting uh, emails from social studies teachers saying, thank you again, this is amazing, because this is an incredibly complex process. This graphic is still quite complex. We boiled it down, folks. This is as far as we can get. So what do I say? God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> to echo what Deborah said, is that right now is a real pivotal point. Information designers are emerging in the graphic design field. They're emerging from computer science. They're emerging from architecture. They're emerging from journalism. And we're coming together in this meta space where we're making things more digestible, more uh, uh, simple, if you will. If there's a mantra, I guess, for the 21st century, is live simply and be less complex.